Tacoma. Welcome back to TV Teaching for First Grade. I'm Mrs. Oslin, and today is Tuesday, October 13th. Before we get started, let's check in with our zones to make sure we're in a good place in our brain and our body to learn. So think about what emotion you're feeling. Use this chart to help you. If you're not sure what the name of the emotion is, check in with what is happening inside your brain. Is your brain fear, feel clear and focused? Can you pay attention to what I'm saying? Check in with your body. Is your body calm and relaxed, but also alert and awake? That's the green zone. This week, we're practicing showing gratitude. Gratitude is when we think about things that we're thankful or grateful for in our lives. And it's important as people that we recognize the people and things around us that make us happy. That, doing that can help us focus on our learning and not focus so much on the things that aren't pleasant or that we just can't control. So right now, I want you to take some think time and think about what are you thankful for? And I'm going to model expressing or showing or saying my gratitude to my learning buddy, Rashid, using the sentence frame, I'm grateful for, hmm, because, hmm. And then you're going to get the opportunity to do that. So listen as I share. Rashid, I'm grateful, grateful for my co-teacher, Mrs. Wally, because she remembered to set the timer for me for this lesson so I don't teach for too long. Now, first graders, it's your turn. Share with your learning buddy who or what are you thankful or grateful for. Oh, I love hearing all the positive comments about things that you're thankful or grateful for. Now, for us to get started with our lesson, the materials that you're going to need are your learning buddy and your brain. Get those two things and I'll meet you over at the screen. You'll remember that every day when we gather together, we're going to be doing some reading and some thinking and some writing. And your job while we're doing that is to listen, share your thinking, and read. You're a strong listener when you keep your eyes on the teacher. Right now, that's me on the screen. You're going to listen to the books, and today we have a really exciting book about one of my favorite topics that I think or hope you're going to enjoy. And I want you thinking about the words and the pictures, and also thinking about what our learning intention is. What is it specifically that I want you thinking about? Today, we are going to learn ways to remember the strategies that you use to participate in conversations about books with members of your reading community. That's a lot of words. What it means is you're going to be thinking about ways that you can talk to people about books and the people are members of your reading community. So it could be whoever is in the room with you right now. It could be if you get the opportunity to talk to your teacher. He or she is a member of your reading community. Your class at your school is your reading community. And you could also practice talking to me on the TV because I'm also a member of your reading community. You'll remember we talked last week about active listening. And active listening can look and sound different depending on where you are and who you're with. When we're at school, Active listening looks like you have listening posture. You're looking at the speaker, you're quiet while someone else is sharing, and you're still with your hands in your lap. Active listening also means that you focus. You're really paying attention to whoever is speaking. If you're focused and you're showing active listening, you should be able to say it back, which means if I share with you what I'm thinking, 
you should be able to respond with, so I hear you say, hmm, and repeat it back. For example, if you were showing active listening while I was sharing my gratitude, you should be able to say, Mrs. Oslin, I heard you share gratitude for Mrs. Wally for setting the timer for you. That's saying it back. Also, you should be able to ask questions. We learned last week from the book Listen Buddy that, l that Buddy was able to ask questions about the directions he was giving, getting, but he wasn't actually listening or focused on what the answers were, and so he got himself into all sorts of trouble. Now, it's important for you to recognize that active listening can look different when you're at home. It's important for you to have those conversations with your family about, as a community, what do you do to listen and show respect to each other? Because it might be different than what we do at school. I know at my house, it's not always the same at the dinner table as it is when my kids are at school. When we're having a conversation at the dinner table, I don't expect my kids to raise their hand when they want to share. They can just go ahead and speak. And that's different than what it is at their learning community at school. Okay, I'm excited to share this book with you. This is an informational or nonfiction text. It's a book that we're gonna learn from. And guess what we're gonna learn about? Ice cream. This is the sign for ice cream. So go ahead and do that with me. Ice cream. <laughs> Kevin likes ice cream, we got his attention. So he's gonna show really good active listening because this is a text, a book about something he's interested in. This book is by Gail Gibbons and she's gonna teach us all about the history of ice cream. Now, while we're reading, make sure you're showing active listening and make sure that you're doing some thinking about what you're learning in this book so that you can talk to someone, have a conversation with someone about what you learned and what you think about ice cream. Ice cream cones, ice cream bars, ice cream sodas. Ice cream is a frozen treat made mostly of cream, milk, sugar, and flavorings. Almost everyone loves to eat sweet, cold ice cream. Now, right off the bat, we're gonna stop and think. Do you like ice cream? Why? So your sentence might start with, I like ice cream because, hmm. Or if you have a different opinion, you might say, I don't like ice cream because. So do some thinking. Now I'm gonna model sharing with my learning buddy my opinion of ice cream. And I want you to think, do you agree with me or disagree with me? Rashid, I like ice cream because it's sweet and I like the kind of ice cream that has a lot of little candies in it, like M&Ms or Oreos. Now, are you able to say back my opinion? So it might sound like this. Mrs. Oslin likes ice cream because, hmm. Go ahead, say back my opinion to me. Did you hear that I said I do like ice cream because it's sweet and I especially like ice cream with little candies in it? If you were an active listener, you probably were able to say it back. No one really knows how or when the first ice cream was made. Some believe that people mixed snow, milk, and rice together in China about 3,000 years ago. I didn't know that, that's new learning for me. About 700 years ago, famous Italian trader Marco Polo came home from China bringing recipes for flavored ices. Chefs for European royalty experimented with new combinations of icy treats. Finally, cream was added and there was a new dessert we now call ice cream. 
About 300 years ago, the British brought ice cream recipes to the American colonies. Ice cream was made by shaking the icy mixture in a special pan for a long time. Only the wealthy, that's people with a lot of money, only the wealthy were served ice cream because it was so difficult to get ice to make it. About 250 years ago, Americans started harvesting ice from ponds and lakes in the winter. It was stored in ice houses and also shipped to the south. Now people could make ice cream year round. It was served only at special events. In 1841, a woman from New Jersey named Nancy Johnson invented the hand-cranked ice cream maker, also called an ice cream freezer. Now ice cream could be made a lot faster just by turning a crank. Now if you look at this picture, it has the crank, which is the handle, and you use that to spin. And inside is where you have ice crystals, and you're going to add all your flavorings and mix it up and you have to crank it and spin it for a long time with ice to get it to freeze into ice cream. The ice cream maker became very popular. It took only one hour to churn the ice cream mixture into creamy ice cream. Throughout the 1800s, people held ice cream socials. This became a popular way to entertain friends. Everyone took turns cranking the ice cream maker. Then they shared the ice cream. To the ice cream mix, people added blueberries, raspberries, maple syrup for whatever flavor they wanted. Now let's stop and do some thinking. We got some examples by Gail Gibbons. People added blueberries, raspberries, maple syrup for whatever flavor ice cream they wanted. And I shared with you at the beginning of the book that I like ice cream because it can have, especially the kind that has different treats in it, like M&Ms or Oreos. Now, I want you to think and get ready to have a conversation either with your learning buddy or someone who's in the room with you about what your favorite addings to ice cream are. Now I'm gonna model with my learning buddy, Rashid. Notice when I tell Rashid and have this conversation, I'm gonna look at his eyes. I'm gonna use a complete sentence, which means I'm going to say, I like hmm because hmm. That's part of having a conversation. Then I'm going to stop and listen to Rashid. And then I'm going to be able to either say back what Rashid said, or ask a question if I'm not sure. So, watch and listen. Rashid, I like M&Ms and Oreos in mint ice cream because I really like the sweetness of the candy with the minty flavor of the mint ice cream. Notice when I shared, I used a voice that was clear and it was loud enough that people could hear, but not so loud that if there's other people around me having conversations, that it's going to interrupt them. Now watch as I listen to Rashid and either say it back or ask a question. Rashid, what I heard you say is, you don't like ice cream. Interesting. Rashid says, lions don't like ice cream. Do you notice that I was looking at him while he was speaking? Do you notice that I was focused and I was able to say it back? And I learned that Rashid didn't like ice cream. You'll also notice that Rashid and I have different opinions or think, things that we think or feel about ice cream, but we can still be good friends. Just because we think differently doesn't mean we can't be friends. So now it's your turn. Do some thinking about what you like in your ice cream and why, and get ready to have a conversation using some good strategies where you're looking at the person, you're using a strong, clear voice, and then listen to someone share their thinking with you. Go ahead.
Now, do some self-assessment. Were you able to say it back or ask a clarifying question? If you were, that means you were showing focused, active listening. Now let's keep reading about ice cream. See what else Gail Gibbons is gonna teach us. Cows. It all still begins at the dairy farm. The cows are milked twice a day. Some cows, such as Jersey cows, give creamier milk than others. The milk is piped into a cooling tank. The milk is kept cool so it won't spoil. A truck comes to the dairy farm. The milk is pumped into the tank of the truck where it is still kept cool. The milk is delivered to the ice cream factory. Other trucks are there too. Some hold liquid sugar. Other trucks deliver many products that make up the different flavors of ice cream. At the factory, the milk is put into a separator. This is where the cream and milk are separated from each other. Cream, milk, and liquid sugar are put into a large vat. The stabilizers and emulsifiers are added. All these ingredients are mixed together. Now, as I was reading, I heard some really big words and I'm not sure what they mean. Luckily, Gail Gibbons gave us some definitions of some of these words. Uh, the first big word was stabilizers. And I'm gonna highlight that word so you can see Stabilizers, say stabilizers. Now clap the syllables in stabilizers with me, ready? Stabilizers, whew, lots of word par er, parts in that word. Now up here is the word stabilizers again. You can't see, new color, try this one. It says stabilizers will keep ice cream from forming icy, lumpy crystals that would make the texture of the ice cream grainy. They also help keep the ice cream from melting too fast. The other word we read was emulsifiers. Emulsifiers will keep the ice cream texture smooth. So Gail Gibbons is giving us a lot of information about how ice cream is made and especially how it's made to stay creamy. Then the mixture is put into a pasteurizer. Here the mix is heated to kill any harmful bacteria. This is called pasteurization. Say pasteurization. They pasteurize the milk, which means they heat it up to kill any bacteria. Next, the mixture flows into a homogenizer, which breaks down any small particles of butterfat. The homogenizer forces the mix through tiny valves under high pressure, which makes the mixture smooth. Now, I'm doing some thinking as a reader, and I'm noticing that there's a lot of work that goes into ice cream just to keep it smooth. Now it's time for the mix to be cooled. It is moved to a cooler and stays there for a few hours. The temperature inside the cooler is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes the mixture firmer. Then the thick mixture is pumped into a freezer. Inside the freezer, blades spin around, forcing air into the ice cream mix, making it softer and smoother. The mixture expands as the air is pumped into it. Now the ice cream goes to different vats for flavoring. Ooh, this is the part I'm excited about. There is vanilla, chocolate, mint, and many other flavors. Often fruits, nuts, raisins, or other foods are added to make different flavors and kinds of ice creams. Now we have ice cream that is very similar to the ice cream made in the first ice cream makers. The different flavored ice creams are sent to their packaging areas. Then containers move along an assembly line. When each container stops, a dispenser fills it up and packs it down with soft, tasty ice cream. The packaged ice cream is moved to a freezer room. Inside the room, it is very cold, about 20 degrees, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The ice cream becomes hard and firm. It is time for the ice cream to be shipped to stores or other places where it will be sold to customers. The ice cream is moved into refrigerated trucks that are very cold inside. P. 
People buy ice cream at so many different places. Some people order ice cream in restaurants and buy it at ice cream stands. There are ice cream trucks and carts too. Most people buy ice cream at their grocery store. Ice cream can be sold at many, in many different containers. It is available without sugar too. Wow, we just did a lot of reading and thinking about ice cream. Take a minute, what are you thinking right now about ice cream? Now share your very last thought with your learning buddy. What are you thinking about ice cream? Friends, we practice lots of strategies that we know that, we can that can help us have conversations, which means talk to people about what we're reading. We practiced active listening, staying focused. We practiced say it back. We practiced asking questions. And we practiced what to do when we disagree with someone. Now your job as you go off to independent read is build your reading stamina, think about what you're reading, and have a conversation with someone around you about what you read today. First graders, thank you so much for reading with me today. This is your five minute break. Make sure you take the chance to go to the bathroom, get your drink of water, and get your wiggles out, because Mrs. Wally will be right back with some math. Thanks, bye.
First graders, welcome back from break. Before we begin our math today, I want you to make sure you have what you need. You need your learning buddy, a whiteboard or paper and something to write with, and your counters. That's really important today. So make sure you have a pile of something to count with. It could be beans or coins, pasta, Legos, something that you can count with today, okay? Great, make sure to grab those and then come on back and we're gonna have a true or false Tuesday. So true means, yep, I agree, it's right, or false means, nope, that's not true, that's not how that works. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at the equation on the board. Seven is the same as three plus four. Do you think that yes, that's true, or nope, that's false? Hmm, well, what is four and three more? <gasps> Rashid, it's seven, isn't it? So this is true. You ready for the next one? I want you to study it and tell me, is it true or is it false and why? Hmm, two is the same as or equal to two plus one. Two plus one is the same as two? Hmm. Is that true or false, first graders? Oh, I can hear you from here. You're all saying false, Mrs. Wally. Why is it false? If you hold up two and one more, you get three. So is two the same as two and one more? Or are they different? They're different. Mm -mm. False. You ready for the next one? True or false? Five and three more is the same as eight. Five plus three equals eight. Is that true or is that false? You could even give a little sound, ding, 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 or meh, meh. Which one do you think? True or false? Pebble, what do you think? You think it's true? Why do you think it's true? Because five, six, seven, eight, is the same as eight? Ding, oh, Mr. Kevin says ding, ding, ding in the back. Yeah, it's eight, it's true. Excellent work, first graders. Now we're gonna practice some counting on. We have some equations and they have dots underneath to help us. But instead of counting all the dots, we're gonna find the greater number and circle it. So which number is more, two or three? And we're going to say three, and then we're going to say four, five. You practice that with me. Three, four, five. Two plus three is the same as five. Excellent. Let's do the next one. Which number is greater, four or three? Which one's greater, four or three? Four, four, five six, seven. What was that, Rashid? Rashid said, Mrs. Wally, I see something else. Rashid said, three and three is six and one more is seven. Rashid used a double. Way to go, Rashid. High five. All right, let's look at the last one. Which is the greater number, five or three? Five, it has more dots. Say five. Five, six, seven, eight. Five plus three is eight. Excellent work, first graders. All right, let's move on. Hmm, how can adding help you subtract? Let's go over to the whiteboard so we can do some work with our counters to figure out how adding can help us subtract. Are you ready? Hmm. Private think time. 
How do you think adding can help you subtract? Look, I brought Pebble today. He's here to help us. Huh. The equation is five minus four equals blank, but then they put the, nu the number bond, five, four, hmm. Now I'm not gonna take five and take four away. They wanna know how adding can help us subtract. <gasps> Pebble. Pebble said, well, Mrs. Wally, we know four plus something equals five. Because when we put the two parts together, we get the whole. Let's try it out, Pebble. Four, and then let's count up till we get to five. Ready, say four, four, five. <gasps> what is it? One. Let's check with our fingers, take five. Take four away. How many are left? One. Do we use counting on to help us subtract? It might also look like this. Are you ready? Four. Whoops, you can't see that. I wrote it on the line. We'll try that again. Four. Five. How many hops does it take? for Pebble to get from four to the number five. Four, five. How many hops was that? It was just one hop. So we can use adding to help us subtract. Let's look at our next problem. Okay, it says, Use counters to show the parts of five in the number bond. Write two equations. Well, take a look at the equations down below. Can you make a square number bond for me on your board? Excellent. And then we're gonna look at these equations. It says blank plus blank equals five. And then it says five minus blank equals blank. So before we can do anything, we need to figure out where the five is going to go. So I have to think about addition equations. A part plus a part equals a whole. When I subtract, I have the whole minus a part equals a part. So what is five? Is five one of our parts or is it the whole? Private think time. Part plus a part equals the whole. So what is five? Tell me, what do you think? It is the whole. Where is the whole in our number bond? Part and a part put together is the whole. So where are we gonna put five? Yes, right here at the top, five. Okay, so let's get the whole. How many counters do we need to put out? Pebble, five. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, Ooh. four, five. Okay, what could one of our parts be? Hmm. How about I put a line right here? Okay, so what are our parts? What's this part? Two. What's this part? Three. Oh, can you write the equation? You try it. Write the equation for this number bond. Okay, two, the add end or the part, plus three, the other add end or the part, is the same as five the whole. Do you agree that if you have two and three and you put them together, you get five? Okay, now I have five. I'm gonna take away this part. How many did I take away? I have five, I took away two. What do I have left? Three, ta-da. 
you did it. Now go ahead, erase the inside of your boxes. Erase these parts, but leave your equations and erase your line. Now I'm gonna put a new line, are you ready? Now what's our first part? Our first part is, yes, first graders, our first part is four. Our second part is one. What is our whole? Four and one make five. So what's, gonna, what's our first addend or part? Four. What's our second addend or part? One. Is four and one more? Five. Four and one more. Five. It is. What if I have five and I take away four? What do I have left? Five. I took away the four. What do I have left? One. Kiss your brains, first graders. Let's reset our work area and then let's see what our next problem is. Okay, Pebble, are you ready? Great, I'm ready too. Oh, it's getting a little trickier. It says write an addition equation and a subtraction equation. Well, let's do our number bond first. Go ahead, make your number bond. And we're gonna do the parts that we know. And then we're gonna figure out the parts that we don't. We know our whole is seven. And we know one part is three. So they said blank plus three equals seven. And seven minus three. Does that say seven minus three, Pebble? That does not say seven minus three. Seven minus three equals blank. Now how could we use our counters? What could we do? Hmm. What could we do with our counters? <gasps> do we know the whole? How many in our whole? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we know one of our parts? What's this part? Three. So I'm going to draw a line that gives me three right there. You do it. Great. So what's my other part? All of this is seven. This part is three. What's this part? Yes, it's four. So now, can we use our number bond to help us write our equations? The part or addend plus three equals seven. What is the part? It's four. We could check that by saying three, four, five, six, seven. Did it work? It worked. Okay, now let's use our number bond. We have seven and which part are we taking away? The three. So what part is left? The four. Let's check with our tool right here. We have seven. If we take the three away, how many are left? Four. First graders, excellent work. Okay, we're gonna reset. Do, 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 do. Oh, sorry, Pebble, I didn't mean to bump you. That's okay, Mrs. Wally. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own. You're going to draw your number bond. Nine up top, six for this part. Hmm, the equations are six plus blank equals nine. And nine minus six equals blank. You can build or draw, it's up to you. Go ahead, solve. I'm gonna give you just a few seconds to try to solve. Hmm, what's my whole? What part do I know? What's the other part? Then how can I use that to help me write the equations? Hmm. 
Great thinking, first graders. I can tell you are working so hard. Okay. What's my hole? Nine. Okay, what part do we know? Six. Better draw my line. There's one part. There's my other part. What's the part I don't know? Three, six, seven, eight, nine. So six plus this part plus the other part, what part is it? Three equals nine. And if I have nine and I take away the six, what is the other part? Three. Let's check here. I have nine. If I take away the six, I have three. First graders. Wow. Look at these strong mathematicians we have. All right. I want you to do this one all on your own. I'm not even going to draw it. Ready? Go. You do it. And then I will tell you the answer when you're done. You have about 20 seconds. Can you figure it out? What's the missing part? Write the addition and subtraction equation. Good job. I see people drawing pictures and building with their counters. They have six as their whole. They've taken two as their part. All right, are you ready? Here's six. We knew two, the other part was four. Two, three, four, five, six. Two plus four equals six. This number should be four. And six minus two equals four. That's the answer you should have gotten. Nice job. If you didn't get that answer, I want you to make sure that you talk with your teacher about this, okay? Okay, let's go on. Now, we have two more to do. You ready? We have seven, and we're going to see if we can do these ones fast. Five, blank plus blank equals blank. What do we know? We know the whole. The whole is seven. We know one of the parts. The part is five. And then it says seven minus five equals blank. Well, let's count on to find out. Five, six, seven. How many? Two. So two plus five equals seven. And seven minus five equals two. Nice work, first graders. Here's a nine. Here's a five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many counters did it take to get to nine? Four. Excellent job. So, what's my first part? Four. What's my second part? Five. What's my whole? Nine. Kiss those brains. Now I have nine and I'm going to take away five. Here we go. I'm going to cross it off. What do I have left? Four. First graders, meet me at the smart board so you can see your assignment for today. Excellent math thinking. Fantastic job today. I love those ones that you're trying to find the missing part. They're like a really fun puzzle. I like to do them for fun. So your assignment is to do page 83 and 84 in your math workbook. If there are any problems that you don't know how to do on these pages, you need to circle them. And when you talk with your teacher this week, you need to ask them for help. Okay? Awesome. Meet me up at the camera for our affirmation. All right, first graders, we've been spending a lot of time at home. And sometimes when we're around the same people all the time, little problems feel like big problems. 
but you have learned so many strategies for being a strong problem solver. You've learned using I messages. You've learned stating how you feel. You've learned from Chili the Penguin how to calm down. Amazing. So your affirmation today is, I am a strong problem solver. So I'm gonna go first, are you ready? I am a strong problem solver. Your turn. Excellent job, first graders. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.